all right student let us start uh, the part 2 of this functions topic so uh, yesterday we did part 1 of the functions and we were able to finish till the periodicity part we'll continue from the periodicity part people who are uh, still watching the functions for the first time i'll recommend them to watch the part 1 first and then come to the part 2 all right so in this topic today we'll be covering uh, even odd identical though we were supposed to cover it yesterday but because of the shortage of time we were not able to do so so we'll be starting even odd identical functions in this particular lecture and then the three remaining topics that is the composite function type of function and the inverse function we'll be covering in today's lecture itself all right so let's start with the first topic of the day that is even odd okay so for even odd let us uh, first of all start with the even function what do you mean by even function so if we put minus x in place of x in the function and f of minus x returns again fx then we call this function as a even function so what do you mean so for example you were given y is equal to fx right and instead of x now you replace x by minus x so it will become what f of minus x but even after putting minus x there is no effect on the function and this comes out to be equal to fx in that particular case you will call this function as even function so the basic example that we you should remember is y equal to x square function okay so if fx is equal to x square what will be the value of f of minus x it will be minus x whole square which is nothing again but x square and it is nothing but we can say fx so that is why i would say that this particular function is a even function right for example if we talk about the y equal to cos x function right let's say this is now equal to fx now if you start putting minus x in this so we know that cos of minus x will again be yes absolutely so cos of minus x will be again cos x again that means equal to fx so that implies this function is also a even function okay other important thing that you people should remember about an even function is that the graph of an even function is symmetrical with respect to y axis so what do we mean by this so let, let us uh, understand this with the help of graph so for example first of all let's take the first even function that is fx equal to x square right so what is the graph of fx equal to x square it's a parabola we know that this graph is something like this right mind the answer but yes what i can say about this that this will be completely symmetrical with respect to y axis or i can say y axis here acts as a mirror it acts as a mirror over here right so that what does this mean that if you take this as a mirror right if you start taking this as a mirror so the reflection of the right will be taken in left or you can say reflection of left will be taken in right so whenever i have to draw an even function i generally draw the graph only in the right half because i know that the left portion will be just the mirror image of this particular section over here okay even if you see the cos x graph right this is something like this if you see the cos on the other side it also goes something like this right so if you notice these two are mirror images of each other right they are mirror images so very important property of an even function that we just have to draw the graph in the right portion so if you know what is the graph in the right portion or what do i mean by right portion is that when x is greater than equal when x is greater than 0 you obviously know what will be the graph on the left hand side because you can take a mirror image of that particular function so th just remember these two graphs because they are actually very important that y equal to x square is a even function and y equal to cos x and why they are even because their graph is symmetrical about the y axis okay now let us talk about the odd function so odd function says if you have y equal to fx right and now you replace x by let's say minus x okay so what you will get now f minus x and if this comes out to be again equal to minus fx this time so the important point here is this particular minus sign right in case of even function it was equal to fx but in case of an odd function this should be minus fx so that means this is an odd function right so the most important function that you people can remember for this definition is the sin x graph right y equal to sin x so let's say this is the fx graph now what is if this is let's say fx is equal to sin x what will be f of minus x it will be sin minus x and minus in the sign can be taken outside so this becomes minus sin x right 
and nothing but it is equal to saying minus of fx which is the condition of a, so this implies this is a not function other function that you should remember is y equal to x cube function right say so simply as we did in the case of the even we remembered x square and the cos x graph here you should remember x cube and the sin x graph so if you put minus x here it will return you what minus x cube which is nothing but minus fx so again this is nothing but odd okay again if we have to go about the graphical property of the odd function so it says its graph is symmetrical about origin with respect to origin i'll understand i'll make you understand what do we mean by symmetrical with respect to origin so let's see how does the x cube graphs behave and what do you mean by symmetric with respect to origin so we know that graph of x cube on on the right hand side is something like this right okay and if we want to draw, draw the graph of this in the left hand side just take the mirror image about the origin something of this sort so what do you mean by uh, you know the uh, symmetric about origin what you people can understand it understand it this way that uh, i have rotated this graph so this was your the quadrant right so shift this quadrant completely by 180 degree so symmetrical about origin means that you have to shift the graph completely from this particular side so this actually this point becomes this point and this point becomes this point so if you turn over the graph this is what you people will see that is why we say this is symmetrical about origin see the sin x graph let me draw the sin x for you right this is y equal to sin x for 0 to pi how it behaves in the left hand side you know that this is the graph right so if you again see that i turn this all around so this point starts moving right and it starts to come here then obviously something of this sort you will obtain try to visualize this on paper by drawing it yourself you will try uh, you will get hold of what i'm talking about so this is how you actually check for odd and even function if you are given the graphs okay though itj mains do not ask questions which involve too much of graphs so we can actually leave this component if you are not very much uh, familiar with this concept otherwise people who know how to use this fabulous they don't have to even worry about what is even and odd otherwise people who are new to this odd and even just go about the basic definition that f of minus x is equal to minus fx for odd f of minus x is equal to fx for even function now let us apply them in the questions straight away okay so the first question is so you have to prove that whether this function is even or odd so for even and odd if i take y is equal to fx is equal to log of x plus under root x square plus 1 and i will try replacing it by f of minus x right i try with because that is how you prove so just replace by this so you will get something of this sort right and at the first it looks like that we cannot do anything about this what should be done because it is neither fx equal to fx and nor equal to minus fx but yes that's the problem and that is why it is a very standard and important question at the same time so what we can do here is that let us see that if we take a rationalization over here right so if you rationalize what you will do is something of this sort into x plus under root of x square plus 1 this is how you will rationalize this whole input of the log so what will be the numerator then become so numerator if you see closely will become x square plus 1 minus x square and the denominator will be x plus under root x square plus 1 right and you can easily see that in the numerator you are getting this x square term cancelled out over here so what is actually left out tell me so it is log of 1 upon x plus under root x square plus 1 and we know that log of 1 by x is nothing but minus log x plus under root x square plus 1 now got it what is the answer yes very easily so we know now this becomes equal to minus fx so this implies this is an odd function and it's a very famous question in fact you can actually remember the answer for this right this is that famous so if you are given under roots do not directly jump on to a conclusion that this function is not uh, neither odd or nor even okay let's try this on the equation 2 so the question 2 says that again you have to uh, you have something like this let's try and put minus x here again 
so what the uh, value it will become it will become something like this minus of this will become 1 plus plus x square and now we can easily see this is nothing but minus fx right so if this is minus fx we have nothing to do over here this is simply again an odd function see here got it if i want to take another question let's say if i take y equal to fx is equal to x sin x so there are properties involving whether there are two functions x and sin x so there are properties also which are based on that product of an odd and odd function will be even product of an even function and an even function will be even but i'm not going into the detail of it you do not you will not be able to remember them and there is no need to because we have a simple very simple formula of calculating this just put this value na so why you need to remember so many formulas when you are actually not asked to so it again becomes if you see x sin x so f of minus x again comes out to be fx that implies this is a, this time is an even function so if you see x in itself is a odd function if i talk about y equal to x is a odd function y equal to sin x is an odd function but the product of these two becomes a even function which is quite much possible right so this much basic you should be able to understand for odd and even okay so now let's start the other uh, topic that is the identical function so for a identical let's say you have two functions y equal to fx and the other is y equal to gx and you want these two functions to be identical or i can also say equal right when the two functions will be equal okay so there is something very important that you people have to understand here first is domain should be same domain should be same for these to be to be equal domain should be equal right and the second most important property is range should also be equal range should also be equal at the this is now important at the domain mentioned in step 1 it is not that you can prove that range they are equal to the range but their domain is not matching but at the domain mentioned in step 1 so their domain and their output at that particular domain should also be same right this is something very important so what do i mean by range uh, at domain mentioned in step 1 so for example um, let's say the domain is equal this step is already there but there is a function f so f on input let's say 1 outputs 2 g is a function which on the input right of let's say 3 gives you output 2 so they if you see the, the range in the range subset 2 is there in both the f and g right okay and for let's say for 3 it returns you uh, some other variable 5 and for 1 it returns you let's say 0 so you can see that domain is also there and uh, in, in uh, other terms okay so and let, let's say i also take this as 5 so so you people can actually understand it very well so if you see that outputs are same so if i talk about output it also has output 2 and 5 it also has output 2 and 5 the domain is also same 1 3 3 1 here so domain is equal range is equal but i would not say that these two are equal why because for input x equal to 1 here the output is 2 but here it is 5 that is the problem okay so for input x equal to 1 both the machines should return the same value so here it has been 2 so here it also should have been 2 in fact if you see in both the cases here that i have taken domains are equal and the ranges are also equal so you do not just have to check domain and range what you have to check domain is equal and then the value of the output at that particular domain or the input should be equal okay so this is how you check identical functions let us apply this concept on questions so it says the first question says that you need to prove whether these two functions are identical or not very simple problem that we have taken so the first function fx over here is sin inverse x plus cos inverse x now we know the formula for this right we know that sin inverse x plus cos inverse x is pi by 2 and for gx also you are given pi by 2 so at the onset it looks like sir these are obviously equal because they are giving the same values in fact you just have written f here you have just written g here 
these two are completely equal what is the problem why there is any confusion right and they mark equal but this particular answer is wrong they, these two are not identical or equal functions why now always remember whenever you are trying to find domain of a function right never apply any formula for domain never apply any formula this is a trick that i can tell you never apply any formula right find domain in the native state for the question so for example what do i mean here is fx is equal to sin inverse x plus cos inverse x right we know that this is pi by 2 no problems at all but we also know that this value is equal to pi by 2 only when that the sin inverse x machine should work cos inverse x machine should work so they both work when their input is between yes minus 1 to 1 so they are equal when x belongs from minus 1 to 1 so the domain of fx is nothing but this particular value whereas if you try and find domain after writing fx is equal to pi by 2 then you will say x belongs to r because now this becomes a constant function this is what i meant by when i said that you should find domain by not applying any formula or any algebra that is what i meant so this is actually wrong over here so fx has domain this what is about what we can say about gx gx is straight away pi by 2 so gx is nothing but a constant function right so gx says for all x i'll just answer pi by 2 so here domain is x belongs to r can you check whether their domain matches or not obviously not it says domain is minus 1 to 1 it says domain is x belongs to r so that means these two functions are not equal not identical i hope my point is clear in this particular uh, example let's take this uh, in the other example so it says this time round that for f tan inverse x plus cot inverse x we again know that this answer should be equal to pi by 2 which if you see is again here as pi by 2 right but this is a constant function whereas f is not a constant function though it will work as a constant function but this time around what is the domain of tan inverse x Do tan inverse x works for every value of x cot inverse x also works for every value of x so what is the net domain of this f function so the domain of x f function is nothing but x belongs to r now you can convert and say under this range fx is nothing but pi by 2 and also gx is equal to pi by 2 for x belonging to r now domain is also equal and for any value of x you will get same answer or the same in uh, output for example if you put x equal to 1 on both the functions you will obviously get what pi by 2 now i can say these functions are identical in nature right remember so now the, i can say they are identical and though at the front these two questions look like exactly similar this left hand side question is not identical this is identical okay now let's take another example of uh, identical function and in fact i have taken this particular example to highlight what is signum function right so what is a signum function so signum function is nothing but it is something of the sort if you want to write it correctly it is mod x by x right when x is not equal to 0 and it takes value 0 when x is equal to 0 or even if you find that this is difficult to learn i'll give you a very simple expression a signum function or i should also write the full form it is called signum right so minus 1 when x is less than 0 it is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0 1 when x is equal greater than 0 so this is how the machine works which is a very simple machine if you see so if i draw them on the number line so for x equal to 0 it will take value 0 right for x greater than 0 it returns constant value this is y equal to 1 line it always return what value 1 for here it will be 0 and for x less than 0 it returns you what line y equal to minus 1 line so this is how the signum function actually works now let us get back to our question so the question was fx is a signum function so if you talk about the domain and range so domain of the signum function is it can take all real values because it is having graph on the entire number line and what is the range now range is very specific either it will take minus one or it will take zero or it will take one 
very simple so for fx we know that domain is r for range we know that it is going to take only give you three values it will give you three values minus one zero and one now let us talk about the gx function so gx is signum of signum x right this is now a composite function we are just going to talk about composite function after this particular concept so it is basically a two-step process right what do you mean by a two-step process that let's say this is the first machine m1 and this is the second machine m2 what is your first machine this is your first machine that is to which x is attached this is your outermost machine which is the m2 machine over here so first of all the x will go into this particular signal let me highlight it with the other pin so this is what is the first machine so this is the m1 machine so x goes into signal machine right so what input can it take again if i talk about domain so what values x can take while inputting this here no problems x can take all real values so domain is both the cases domain is equal because the machines take both the same input that is x belonging to r so what is then this becomes signum x so for the other machine the output of this particular machine now see if you can see becomes the input of the second machine so what this value will return it will return you what minus one zero or one these three particular values so in the third second machine you are actually entering either minus one so let's say if minus one is the answer what will be the uh, answer to this machine what will be the output just see the graph above so if you put minus one x equal to minus one right so you your answer would be minus one right if you put x equal to zero in the machine right what you will get through the machine zero and if you put x equal to one through the machine you will get one so these are the three answers that you will get so this composite function or the very, very complicated machine is also giving you what three outputs that is minus one zero and one it was also taking domain x belonging to r our left hand function was also domain x belonging to r uh, and its range was also minus one zero one right clear so these two functions are again identical they are again identical no problem at all and we if you if you have any sp uh, speculation about this how we have done this just take a value and put it so for example just put x equal to 5 on in both on both sides so for example if i put x equal to 5 on both these sides we know that for x equal to 5 f is going to return for a uh, sure one so see how this works so if you put x equal to 5 machine 1 will return for g m1 will return what 1 then m2 for 1 will return what 1 goes to m2 then m2 will return again 1 same input is giving you same output that means they are identical so these two functions are basically identical i hope the concept is clear Okay, so the next topic that we have to study is the composite function. So what do you first of all understand by composite function? I am sure that you people must have gone through something of this f of g, right? Or uh, g of f, or let's say y is equal to f of g of h x, right? So these things are actually called composite function and these are very easy to understand. So let me make sure that you are first of all comfortable with these kind of things. So what do you understand by this particular machine is what is the particular machine which is attached with x g so g is acting as the first machine so understand these are all machines right so g the x first of all goes to g right the output of the g function then becomes the input of the other function which is in this particular case f and then you get f of g this is what is meant by this so if i have to draw the diagram for this as you actually draw nbd of uh, you know kind of in kinematics this is how composite functions actually work so for this particular case the first function that you will you are seeing here is now f the output of f then becomes input of g and then you finally get what yes then you get goff this is what is the meaning of goff this if i have to talk about what is the first machine tell me very quickly yes so the first machine is h this time then the second machine here is g and the third machine over here this time around is f this is how the workflow is so if you have to talk about the workflow this is the workflow of this particular concept okay and for the composite uh, machines very inter interesting concept that uh, if you talk about machines so 
output lies here right this is output in every case this is the output right so when will you obtain the output can you tell me so output will be obtained when all these you know uh, machines work it could not be that your f machine works for some input so for example this is the domain here right so for a particular domain this machine works and this does not work so you will not get the output so for a composite function to work this should also work this should also work similarly here in the three tire system so this is i can say two machine system right it could be a two machine system here also it is a two machine system the only difference is the first machine is f here here the first machine is g and you read it the other way around right you read it from the last so last machine is f so that is why you say f of g but instead how it works internally is that first machine that will work is g here it was what is happening here it is a three machine system right it is a three machine system so for three machine system all the three machines should work they should also work they should also work they should also work so you need those values of x for which h will also work g will also work and f will also work right we will try to work on these in the questions so that you become very much clear what i'm talking about let's start with the question first of all so let's start with the very basic question it says that uh, two functions are given right the first function that is given to you is fx which is under root my mistake the first function is this and the second function is you are asked to find what is the value of f of g right a very simple question you just have to find the particular expression of f of g so how you do it actually so you know fx right if you just compare this so it is nothing but you can write f of g as f of g of x this is how you write it so just compare instead of x written over here now you have complete gx so what i could have done over here i could have just replaced the value of x in this particular f by gx so this is actually what is happening in this case and now you just simply put the value of gx from here so what it will be then become it would be mod of sin x minus 1 so this is the answer we are looking for okay but if you closely observe none of the answer options actually satisfies your uh, particular answer so why because we have to simplify this for further what is mod of sin x minus 1 so again a very important concept which you should actually remember this as a formula i can say modulus so modulus does not mean uh, does not it, this value will not change even if you take a minus inside what is 1 minus sin x can we write 1 as sin square x plus cos square x by uh, any problem in this and can sin x be written as 2 sin x by 2 and cos x by 2 right we can write this also if you see these two things are equal and what this actually converts to a square b square minus 2 ab so i can say the value of this is nothing but sin x by 2 minus cos x by 2 mod right and now you can apply what square because this is nothing but square so either you take square inside or outside does not matter actually in fact if you have written it something of this sort this is also absolutely correct don't worry about it because it's a square so you square inside and then take a mod it's one and the same thing and you still have to take under root over here so the value that you will obtain is something of that this is the under root okay and you have something of this modulus sin x by 2 minus cos x by 2 square so the answer of this particular question would be sin x by 2 minus cos x by 2 right and if you just write this this is wrong remember you have to put a modulus sign right why because under root x square is not equal to x it is equal to modulus x because under root a, under root quantity never returns a negative value whereas this could be a negative value that is why you have to apply a modulus sign so our answer to this particular problem becomes b it would not have changed if you have written the answer in the other format that is if you have written the answer this it is absolutely fine no problem it is actually the same answer don't worry about it right so both of them are same okay this is a very basic problem so for this what you people have to understand as a formula is this is a formula again i would say this was not a problem on functions it was a trigonometric uh, property so one plus minus sine x right can be written as what sine of x by 2 plus minus cos of x by 2 
whole square right so remember this and add to your formula list okay now let's take the other problem it says that fx is equal to now fx is equal to uh, a minus x raised to power n 1 by n okay and a is given to be positive n is a positive integer then you have to find f of f right so what do you understand by f of f now any problems that instead of fx now you are given f of fx okay so f of fx will become something of this sort now what you should do instead of x replace it by fx right so it will become something of this particular stuff don't just hurry for these kind of questions they are very simple you just have to keep your patience right so this is something of this sort now replace the value of fx why you need to hurry on i have i never understand why people do mistake in questions of uh, this particular uh, co uh, you know topic just solve it very plainly so if you see the powers actually get cancelled out right and uh, what is being left over here is nothing it's a very simple problem and i guess it is over also so it reduces to a minus a minus x raised to power n whole raised to power 1 by n and again i would say a cancels out you are just left with x raised to power n whole raised to power 1 by n which is nothing but x so f of f x is nothing but x in this particular case which is this well so let's take the other problem to understand though this is a very interesting property that we have obtained that f of f is equal to x uh, i'll cover this in the inverse topic very important stuff well, now let's take the other problem which is a very interesting problem let's see what is given it is given that gx is there right we are given the value of the function gx instead of fx now to be given we are given the value of g of f right if i write this after multiplying it by 2 so it will become something of uh, this particular quantity over here right and then you are asked to find the value of fx out of this right and this is something which is uh, right now being very common in uh, entrance examinations these kind of questions so how do we solve these kind of things so f of g or g of f is nothing but you can say it is g of fx like this and this is given to be equal to 4x square minus 10x plus 4 right so i split this as lhs and i split this as the rhs so if i try and write my g fx right g of fx by using this definition of g how will i write it you just replace in this particular definition of gx just replace x by fx yes so this is something which you should be able to understand very easily right this component no problem till now and if i have to just equate it with the rhs rhs still remain the same it is 4x square minus 10x plus 4 now if i solve this i can say f square x plus fx is equal to 4x square minus 10x plus 6 this is the thing that it will become right mind this uh, square here right this is this should not be here so how do you solve something of this sort now you want to find the value of f from here which though this seems to be a quadratic on the left hand side and there is also a quadratic on the right hand side we have never solved something of this so actually it is very simple it's just a tricky method of how you solve this particular step so rather than writing fx i'm just replacing it with f right don't just worry about this can i say this is f into f plus 1 is equal to 4x square minus 10x plus 6 and if you see what is this particular quantity this is product of two consecutive terms product of two consecutive terms right and if lhs can be written something like this the same concept should be applicable to the rhs also so the rhs rhs also should be written as product of two consecutive terms that is the concept that you people have to use while solving this so for example if i say 4x square minus 10x plus 6 i want to write this as product of two consecutive terms product of two consecutive terms can you tell me how you will do this particular activity just think of it okay so let's see the highest value term the, the highest degree term is 4x square when you will get 4x square when 2x and 2x are getting multiplied right 
so this is your actually the hint here so you will get something of let's say 2x plus lambda into the next consecutive term would be 2x lambda plus 1 can i say something like this and if you here find out the lambda then your answer is over right so let's see what we will get so if i try and multiply this what answer you will get if you just multiply it you will get 4x square right 2 lambda x if you multiply these two plus 2x lambda for this particular stuff and plus 2x also for this one and the constant would be lambda into lambda plus 1 right just compare the coefficient now this become 4x square collate all the terms of x what it will become 4 lambda plus 2 4 lambda plus 2 times x plus lambda into lambda plus 1 got it so here if you just compare your coefficient of x here coefficient of x is minus 10 here it is 4 lambda plus 2 what is the value or in fact you can also say that sir here the coefficient constant is 6 here the constant is lambda into lambda plus 1 so if I say I am comparing coefficient of x so it would be minus 10 is equal to 4 lambda plus 2 and what is the value of lambda that you will obtain from here very simply I can say lambda is equal to minus 3 right so you should not immediately jump to that answer is lambda is equal to minus 3 check for coefficient of constant also coefficient of constant right it should come out to be 6 right so just apply and see whether you are getting 6 here or not it is minus 3 into minus 2 yes you are getting 6 that means the value of lambda is equal to minus 3 is correct now you have actually got your answer just replace the value of lambda here and here so what will the answer become then absolutely so the answer to this particular problem is 2x minus 3 into 2x minus 2 that is 2x minus 3 into 2x lambda plus 1 so what is the value of f that you can now tell me yes so f is nothing but equal to 2x minus 3 okay and this is how you actually solve these kind of questions very interesting problems re-revise the video to understand what and how we have solved it now let us take another problem to highlight the concept of uh, composite function it says fx is defined on 0 to 1 so that means when you see defined on so that means what is given to you domain of f is given so domain of f is nothing but it is given to be 0 comma 1 so that means if f is a machine then it will work only when the input lies between 0 to 1 this is what you should understand by domain and defined and they are one and the same thing then you are asked to find the domain of a machine which is called g and it is represented by something of this right so at the first you people do not actually understand what you have to do here whereas now i'll make sure that it becomes very easy for you guys to understand what is there so this gx is a combination of two machi machines let's say this is machine one right and i would say this is machine two right so now let us see about the machine one first what is machine one saying so machine one is f of e raised to power x okay so i would rather say this is a composite machine why composite can you people tell me we know that how fx works we know this for sure so can you see that if i have said hx is equal to e raised to power x then same machine would have been f of h of x now you are getting hold of it so if i have to draw the diagram of this particular machine how it should be treated it would be that x first of all goes to the h machine and then it will go to your f machine and then you will get f of hx right for this to happen i told you in the earlier concept and when we started this particular concept that these both machines should work right both of them should work that is what we have to check so what is the h machine h machine is e raised to power x is there any problem with e raised to power x there is no denominator there is no log there is no under root so it says i will work for every value of x i have no problems right and the input of this machine so what is the input of f then 
so input of f is nothing but what output of h which is e raised to power x right and but we are given that domain of f so that means the value at which the machine f will work is nothing but 0 to 1 so that means this actually can be written something like this also so input of f should be between 0 to 1 this is actually what you should understand by domain okay so that means here input is e raised to power x so this f machine will work only when your input is between 0 and 1 that is e raised to power x is between 0 and 1 right this is the most crucial step of how you actually have to understand this particular question okay and if, if you have to solve this take log on both sides it becomes log 0 though we cannot take log I'm just trying to help you to understand almost log 0 this becomes x and this becomes log 1 with base e so if you try and target this what is log almost 0 though we cannot have log 0 here so this becomes minus infinity to x and log 1 is always 0 so this machine works when x is lying between minus infinity to 0 so this is actually that means the machine 1 will work when x lies between minus infinity to 0 why i am saying minus infinity to 0 because this first machine works on every value of x so the intersection of the this and this is nothing but this particular answer so the machine 1 will work when this is the answer right minded we have just solved machine 1 we still have to solve our machine 2 the answer is not still over so if I talk about machine 2, so what is machine 2? Machine 2 is f of log of mod x. Now again, can you understand what is this machine? This is again a composite machine. And if I want to make it as simple as possible, so it's actually a three machine system. Can you people tell me how it becomes a three machine system? First function that I can say is the mod function, right? So let's say h is equal to right mod x gx function becomes the log x function so the machine is actually working something like this so x first of all goes to your mod machine right then the output of this machine goes to your log machine and then this particular stuff goes to your f machine and then actually you obtain your this particular function so actually it is a three machine system okay Again, individually, try. so if this output has to be obtained, again, if you want to obtain an output over here, this should work, this should work, and this should work. So what is the condition for mod x? Is there any problem for mod x? No, there is no problem. It will work for every value of x belonging to R. What is the input of this machine now? For this, the input becomes mod x. What is the condition that log works on? Log says that my input should be greater than 0 here input is mod x right so you want mod x to be greater than 0 which is true for every value of x except 0 very important step right so it will work for every value of x except 0 because at x equal to 0 the mod x will return 0 and log machine will not work at x equal to 0 okay so now we have talked about two machines the first machine works on this the second machine works on all values of r except 0 now we are coming to the third machine for machine 3 we know that input should be between 0 to 1 what is the input here now the input here is the output of this machine which is log of mod x so here you actually want to solve something of the sort log of mod x should lie between 0 to 1 okay this is in this particular condition this third machine will start working and if you solve this, this becomes e raised to power 0 to e raised to power 1. So that means mod x will work when this is from 1 to e, right? And the answer to this particular inequality is nothing but it will work when that means x belongs to minus e to minus 1, okay, union 1 to e. So, how do we solve How we have solved this? Just remove the mod. You will get the answer from 1 to e. The same thing then will should also happen from the negative counterpart. So, that is why I have put minus e to minus 1. So, this machine will work only when this is the criteria. Now, I want all the three machines to work 
right in this particular machine too so it works on all values of x it works on except 0 right and it works on only this particular value so what is the answer that machine 2 will work on yes absolutely so the machine will 2 will work on only this particular value that is the third one right if you take the intersection of this this and this this is the answer that you will obtain so now you have machine 1 which works on this machine 2 which works on this for gx to work both the machine should work what is the intersection of these two answers these two intersection of these two now you have to take intersection of these two answers so what is the final answer that you people will obtain this says this will work only when x is negative and this says the negative region that is there is minus e to e so the answer for this particular problem when the machine gx will work is minus e to minus 1 this is the answer we are looking for a very difficult problem to understand but if you get hold of this particular problem i i can assure you that you are done with the domain range and the composite function part this is one of those questions which is not of the level of j means it is something which will be asked in j advanced but very beautiful problem to understand the concept of composite function and domains okay next concept that you have to study is the type of function so there are three type of functions or in fact i would rather say mappings also so do not get confused between the word mapping and function they are one in the same thing right so one one or either we call it injective so just you have to remember the names that one one function is also called injective mapping onto function or onto function can be called surjective mapping bijective mapping is a combination of these two when both of these actually are there then we we call it bijective all right we will now do them in detail just stick to your table so first of all let us talk about what is the injective mapping so injective mapping means or we can say the one one function is said to be one one if different elements of a so now first of all again revise what do we mean by this right so this means there is a function in which elements of a are related to elements in b by some particular constraint which is actually defined by this particular function okay so this particular value of a is known as domain we have already done this and this actually is not called range it is called codomain all right you people have to understand this first of all so now if the form you want this function or this mapping to be a one a one one function so what it says if you put same inputs then the output will obviously be same but if you put two different values of x you should not get same value of output right so that means if you put same input same output but if you have two distinct inputs answer should also be distinct answer could not be same so if you see in here let's say if i say this is set a this is set b so a is mapped with u so this is actually image of a right image b has image v c has a bit so c has image w over here right so every element in a has a image and they are not overlapping so for example a has u so that means u does not have any other image right so in fact you could understand it in the other way around that elements elements in b should have should have only one pre image right so you understand what do you mean by pre-image? Pre-image is when you apply the reverse method, this arrow. So the pre-image of U is A. So it should have only one pre-image. Also keep in mind that it is not necessary that every element in B should have only one image. There could be that some elements in B are empty. Let's see in the other figure. So it says P is mapped with Y, R is mapped with X, Q is mapped with Y. So only these three elements of B are being used, right? whereas w is uh, sorry z is not being used so no problem you just take those values in the set b which are being used or they are uh, serving as an image so these three values are actually your range we'll talk this much more in the onto function so these three values are range that is if i have to talk about range so range of this particular function is nothing but w x y whereas codomain so the codomain is the entire set right so you will add w y x z so all these four are in the codomain 
सो डब्ल्यू हैज ओनली वन प्री इमेज एक्स हैज ओनली वन प्री इमेज वाई हैज ओनली वन प्री इमेज नो प्रॉब्लम बोथ दी फंक्शन आर वन वन फंक्शन got it this is how you see it when you are given set diagram the opposite of one one is many one function right so uh, as we did that element in b i am just reiterating for you element in b has only one pre image this is what we talked about only one pre image for one one so you can also understand it by the context so it says one one can you see here we are using word one now context is many one right so how many pre images could be has yes has many pre images has many pre images if we start using this concept then this becomes a many one function see it very clearly here so a now here has a a has two pre images immediately i can say this is not a one one function right similarly b here b to even have more than two so b has three pre images right so that is the reason i would say this function is many one function right so many one is nothing but reverse of one one function got it so for into fun uh, sorry for injective mapping it is something very important that how you figure out that it is a one one function there are two process of finding it right how do we do it if you know how to draw a graph if you draw the graph and then draw lines parallel to x axis that means parallel to x axis means you just have to draw horizontal lines right start drawing horizontal lines and if the horizontal line cuts the graph at only one point then the function is one one i'll just show you don't worry the second method is that you find the derivative if you cannot draw the graph or the graph is not easy to draw then find the derivative of fx that is find f dash x if f dash x is greater than 0 for all values of x belonging to r that means this is the definition of that fx is strictly increasing got it so if either fx is strictly increasing or you get the condition that this is less than 0 for all values of x belonging to r that means fx here this time round is strictly decreasing then i can say the function is 1 1 right in both the cases let me just highlight with both the things in by drawing diagrams for you people okay so the first function that i would like to draw your attention to is y equal to x square right you know that this is a parabola right what is the diagram of this so diagram of this parabola is actually something of this right i i told you if you know the graph what you people have to do is you have to draw horizontal lines that is horizontal lines means that are parallel to x axis can you see that here the horizontal lines cut the graph in more than one point the same horizontal line here cuts the graph in two points the other line will also cut the graph in two points here and here that is why this function is many one this is what i meant by the diagram right if you want the derivative method let's see the derivative method also so what i told you that you have to find f dash x so what is f dash x in this case f dash x is equal to x is it always positive can you say that this is always positive no why because i know that f dash x is greater than 0 when x is greater than 0 it is negative when x is negative so it is not strictly increasing or strictly decreasing it does not have a single property so that is why also it is many one whereas if we take a very simple graph that is y equal to x cube now right let me draw y equal to x cube for you people right so y equal to x cube the shape is something like this right and now if you start drawing horizontal lines it's very obvious that the horizontal line will only intersect at one point so that is why i can say this time round this function is yes this function is 1 1 no doubt about it this function is 1 1 now let's see the derivative approach in this particular case what is f dash x so f dash x is 3 x square i know that this is always positive this is always positive so that means this is strictly increasing right 
do not worry about sir their uh, f dash x can be equal to zero it is not positive we will cover this in the increasing decreasing topic but yes for now it is strictly increasing that's for sure so if you know the diagram then also you can show uh, how the function is one one or you can just directly apply the property of derivatives so if we want to take another uh, example is that uh, what is sin x and cos x yes now you you are getting hold of what i'm talking about it's very easy you it's become very easy if you know the graphs and that is why every teacher prescribes that you should remember the graphs so the graph of sin x would be something like this right and we obviously know that this will continue right this continues like this so a horizontal line in fact now will cut the graph at infinite points why if this is the horizontal line that you people are drawing it will keep on cutting the graph for infinite points if you keep on moving right so this is again a many one curve right this is how you should solve it now let's take a very uh, very important uh, concept or a problem you can say you find number of injective mappings right or number of one one functions number of one one functions in this particular case right this is what we have to found uh it says this is a mapping from going from a to b so f is a function which goes from a to b this is given to us right a has m elements b has n elements you need to find how many one one mappings could be possible okay now let's start it's a basically a question of pnc it's a pnc problem okay but very very important so let's see how we apply pnc problem over here let's pick x1 over here so x1 has how many options it, it can has how many images just uh, reply to this how many images in b can you tell me the answer for this how many images in b how many options are there for this all these n are available so you can will say sir this has how many options yes so this has n options you will tell me okay so now what about x2 how many options x2 have so for example we say that x1 is mapped already to y1 so x2 will have now n minus 1 options why because if this is a one one function that y y1 cannot have any other pre image except x1 because y1 is already tied up to x1 now y1 cannot be tied to any other element in set a right then only it will become one one so x2 will have how many options yes x2 will have n minus 1 x3 will have n minus 2 so you see a pattern definite pattern is going on what will be the number of options for x and then so for x2 you subtracted 1 for x3 you subtracted 2 so for this what you will do you will subtract n yes yes come come yep yep not n minus m remember this will be n minus m plus 1 and the total answer is then total answer will be that is fundamental rule of multiplication so this will be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 4 just compare this to your dash problem now this becomes a dash problem this is the first dash this is the second dash third dash fourth dash and the last dash will be occupied in n minus m plus 1 ways so these are the ways or you can say total number of 1 1 functions 1 1 functions Okay, and if you want to simplify this and remember this is a formula, so for remembering the answer, answer is n c n p m. To answer it, answer is n p m. You have to select m elements from this, and they could be arranged also. So in fact, if you want to remember this, it is something of this sort. N c m. That is, you select first of all n elements, uh, m elements from this particular set over here. And they could be arranged so that arrangement could be done in m factorial ways this is what i taught you in the pnc lecture so just remember the formula that for one one function the answer is ncm into m factorial okay now the next type of mapping that we have to do is the surjective mapping or we call it the onto function onto function or you call it surjective mapping right it is one and the same thing so don't get confused in fact you should remember that both of them are one and the same right surjective mapping or onto it's one of the same thing it says if f is a function from a to b right it is a function from a to b then this will become an onto function very simply if 
range of f is equal to core domain of the f right this is what is written also on the screen for you people right the range of f should become core domain of f we actually did in the first class also and i just highlighted it back also that range is not equal to core domain it could be equal to or it is actually a subset of core domain right so a function becomes a onto when the range actually becomes equal to core domain so for example here in the function one you have what is the core domain let us start writing core domain and range right so first of all the core domain of this particular answer here is three elements u v w what is the core domain here it is w x y and z so these four elements are the core domain what are the range in these two diagrams let's say range if i have to talk about the range so range is those elements in core domain which have pre images right or which are actually linked with some element of x those are the elements of range range is actually what you will get as the output here these three elements are mapped with something on the left hand side so u v and w are basically the range what is the range here w x y z is not mapped anywhere so you will not count z in your range so these three elements are range can you see that in the cases the case one these two ma matches so that is why i would say this is an onto function right whereas in these two they do not match range is in this particular case range is not equal to core domain this i would say is not a onto function so the reverse of onto that we people have to remember is called into function so this is a into function and this is a onto function got it and to uh, determine whether a function is onto or not there is no graphical method that we can apply as we did in the case of uh, one one function that either you draw a graph or you can derivate there is no method of doing uh, finding onto similar to those lines we'll have to solve i'll uh, take some examples for the, uh, by which you uh, it will become clear to you that how you have to solve the mixed problems so okay before uh, we go further let's say that uh, the functions can be clubbed as both of them so for example a function can be one one and on to right a function can be one one and into the second category right this let's say one this is the second category other category would be many one and on to right let's say this is the third category and the other category could be many one and into right so you can also club the answers something like this so you have four categories now and now we have four diagrams on the screen our target is to figure out out of these four which all these are right we have to just number them accordingly with the cases we have let's start with the first one okay the first one here says a b c d all have their mappings so what is the definition of uh, one one so for one one every element in b should have only one pre image that means this particular element should be linked only to one element in this if i see that 240 is linked with two elements a and c so that means this is a many one function right straight away i can say this is many one okay so this is many one now let us talk about onto or into functions so for onto that means code domain should be equal to range so for range 240 is a part of range 320 is a part of range and 108 is also a part of range because these are all outputs here code domain is equal to yes code domain is equal to your range so this is one many one and onto so if i have to answer then this becomes my option 3 so this is case 3 in my particular answer okay so now just quickly apply it here so again you can see that b has 240 has two options so this becomes many one and you have empty numbers in the set also so this is not on two so the answer to this is case 4 right that is many one and into let's quickly move to this so here every element in b has only one pre-image can you see 240 is linked with only b 
320 is linked with only C, 100 and so on. So this is function is definitely 11. But you can see that some elements are again not included in the range. So this is into. So it is 11 and into function. So this is case 2. Okay. Now let's apply this here. Can you see that all the elements in B have a unique pre-image? And all the elements of codomain are in range also. So this is actually our case. Yes, this is case 1 which is a case of 1 1 also and it is also on 2. I hope these things are clear now with the help of diagram. The third type of mapping is the bijective mapping which says a bijective function or a bijective mapping is possible only when the function is both as written on your screen both injective as well as surjective. So the function should be both 1 1 and the function should also be at the same time on 2. So function which is both 1 1 and on 2 will be known as bijective. So this actually reduces the condition of bijective mapping. Okay, so there is no straightforward method to find out bijective. You have to prove that these two are valid, then only the function will become bijective. So as in the fourth case, the fourth diagram that we took in the previous concept. So if you can see this is 1 1, right? And this is also on to right so i would say a mapping from a to b in this particular case so i would say this is a bijective mapping this is what i will say about this so i would say this is a bijective mapping okay so the question that actually arrives here is a very general question which says find number of bijective mapping so again i take that this is a set a and this is a set b you are given a mapping of something like F is a relation between which goes from A to B. Okay. So how many bijective mappings or bijective functions are possible? So for bijective mappings, first of all, the first rule is number of elements, number of elements in A and B should be equal. In A and B should be equal you have to remember this step why this is happening because the proof of this is because you have one one function right and you have on two function as well so one one means that there is every element in b has only one pre-image and all the elements in b are tied up with elements in a right so that means there is no element empty in set b and all the elements in b are uniquely tied up with elements in a just think of it, this is what will give you this particular condition that elements in A and B are actually equal. Okay, so for bijective function, the set, both sets will have, if it has n elements, it will also have n elements. So both have n elements. And again, as we did in the case of finding number of on, into functions, or sorry, number of injective mappings, that is one one functions. So let's say how many options are there for x1? How many options are there? How many options of images are there options for image are there for x1 what you will say it can pick from any one of the these n options so it has n options available what about x2 then x2 will have again not n but n minus 1 one less because let's say if y1 is tied to x1 you cannot assign any other element of this set y1 right similarly x3 will have how many options available then n minus 2 x4 will have how many options available n minus yes now you are getting it and lastly xn will have how many options it will not have any option left it will have only one option left so if you just again rule uh, apply the rule of fundamental rule of multiplication so the answer is total number of functions which are actually bijective in nature it bijection mapping or bijection function are n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 and this goes on till 1 which is nothing but n factorial very important formula so the number of bijective mappings are nothing but n factorial clear so let us do question based on your mapping so it says there is a mapping that is there is a function whose domain is r and whose codomain is also R. So now again, 
whenever you see something of this sort you just think of it as domain is you have to start thinking like this for domain yes r right immediately as you read this okay now the function what is given to is fx is equal to cos x and now it is asking what sort of function it is either 1 1 on 2 whatever right we know how to draw the diagram of cos x right so what is the diagram of cos x be like we know that cos x is something first of all of like this and we also know that it is an even function that means it is symmetrical about y axis right something of this sort can you clearly see if I start drawing horizontal lines if I start drawing horizontal lines okay so this will not be 1 1 for sure because a horizontal line is cutting the value at different point the graph is being cut by the horizontal line at different points so this is surely first of all many one and I told you also to remember this particular property so this is many one okay now let us talk about on to what so this is something which people generally find the difficult part people are actually comfortable with many one and one one but they are not generally that comfortable with one one and on two so for on two it is given that codomain we know that for on two codomain should be equal to range and codomain is given to be all real numbers what is the range of the function what is the range of cos x yes the range of cos x is nothing but minus one to one is it equal to r r means all real values it is very restricted it says it will only return you values or outputs which lie between minus one to one which is not equal to all real values so here codomain obviously is not equal to range that means this is not onto this is into so there are two properties of this function this is first of all many one and this is at the same time into so these two are the options neither one one nor on two this is the option we are looking for okay this is how you solve these kind of problems and don't worry about the difficult problems they are not going to be asked at the JE mains level this this kind of basic problem will be asked okay so if even if they have to ask a difficult problem this will be of this particular stature again we have to talk about the mapping for this particular function now again immediately as you read this you know that domain of this particular function is given to be what domain belongs to 0 to infinity and yes this is not range yeah now you will call it as codomain never call it range right so this is 0 to infinity so actually domain and codomain set are same now your fx here is x upon 1 plus x your target is to first of all find range also right you have to find range also and you have to find whether it is 1 1 or not okay let's try with 1 1 also and 1 1 I'll try and prove you people with the help of derivatives because this is what everybody actually should work on so we did a proof for 1 1 right where we try to prove using derivatives let's apply using derivative how we'll solve this okay so now let us apply the concept of derivative so just differentiate f dash x I'm leaving that part to you and in fact it will be better if you can remember the derivative of this also because it is a very famous term so this becomes 1 upon 1 plus x square right and we can tell you by seeing this that this implies that f dash x is always greater than 0 for all values of x belonging to r right and even if I say for x belonging to the domain part right that is 0 to infin uh, infinity f dash x is positive that implies this is strictly increasing and I told you that if a graph is strictly increasing this implies the function is 1 1 clear so this is how you actually prove 1 1 if you are not sure of the graph there was another method so another method if I have to talk about without even getting to the graph another method which is a very common sense method right if you can ho get hold of it so it says f is equal to x upon 1 plus x what I can do I can add 1 and subtract 1 and this will reduce to 1 minus 1 by x so if you can see this is a constant and this is a variable so if you put a unique value of x you will get a unique value of 1 by x so that means different x will return you different y that's for sure 
if you can understand this this is much more otherwise i cannot help and explain it much better way otherwise you just use the derivatives approach so we have already got that this function is 1 1 okay now let's talk about the range part so for the range we want to find what values y can take right how do we solve this component yes the basic stuff that you cross multiply it and now try and find the values that x can take so what will the values that x can take x will become something of this sort 1 minus y and i would say x is equal to y by 1 minus y and what is the domain of this particular function then what is the domain of this domain is y belonging to r minus 1 this is what i can say about here so this actually not the domain of this but you get actually the answer of the yes you get the answer for your output so we know that the range now we have derived the range so range is nothing but range is r minus minus 1 but what is the codomain that is given to you now start mapping it yes the codomain is 0 to infinity range is r minus minus 1 which does not match so that means it is so answer to this particular problem is then straight away that you can say that the function the function is nothing but 1 1 but it is not onto so the answer that we were looking for then will become what 1 1 but not onto right so now the next problem says that a set a has three elements and the set b has four elements it, it is something that a function is defined from a to b right this is also there in the question and you have to find the number of injections that can be defined from a to b so injection means what do you mean understand by injection that is you are asked to find number of one one functions right this is what is being asked of you so here if we start drawing this is the set a and this is the set b and there is a mapping from a to b something like this and uh, this is three elements let's say um, a1 a2 and a3 and there are four elements one two three and four so this is something of this sort and you need to find one how many one one mappings are possible in this particular case so just go about the dash problem i have just explained you this so let's say how many options are there for a1 a1 so let's start from a1 so how many options that a1 has a1 has all the four options so that means it can have four kind of images right let's say i mapped a with let's say four here right so now tell me about how many options are there for a2 so now a2 has three options right because now it cannot have four otherwise it will not be one one so let's say i map a2 with one right so now how many options are there with a3 yes now a3 only has two options so this is how you have to done this is a very basic question don't worry about this because we have actually done this earlier also so these are the three options and the answer to this problem then will be four into three into 2 okay and the net answer then would become 24 which is our c option here i am much more interested in the other part of it let's say if the question was i just changed the question a bit it says how many many one functions are there how many many one functions how many many one functions are there so how you will solve this now how many many one functions are there can you tell me so yes how you will solve this particular problem is first of all find out total number of functions that are possible so total number of functions are possible you first of all have to find this minus number of one one functions this is how you find number of many one functions number of one one functions and you subtract it from the total number of cases so we have already got this answer that is 24 here we now need to find total number of functions how you will find total number of functions can you tell me how you can find total number of functions that is again also very simple and this is actually you can learn as a formula also again draw dashes right we draw dashes this is for a1 this is for a2 and this is for a3 right and how many options are there for a1 now a1 can have all any four of the images similarly a2 can also have now any four so we are not asking you for one one function but we are asking generally how many relations you can draw for function it is just that a2 should have a image and it could be repetitive so now i can say that a2 has one a3 can also have one that's not a problem i'm just finding the total number of functions available so here it will also be four so for this the answer would be 
four cubes. So that means total number of functions that are possible is sixty four. And if we want to summarize this into a formula, formula would be that let's say if there is a function going from a to b, where this has m elements and this has n elements, so the total number of functions that will be possible, which you should actually remember as a formula, then would be n raised to power m number of functions, right? Or if you want to remember it another way, you just remember if there are number of elements in b are b, number of elements in a are a. B raised to power a number of functions would be there, right? So we have got our answer is 64. So nothing need to be done, just the answer. So 64 minus 24. So number of many one functions would this? Yes. You now you have the answer, a definite answer for this. So this will be 40. Got it? So the next topic that we will have to do is the inverse of a function. So what do you understand by inverse of a function? Let us uh, first of all draw a diagram to first of all understand what do you mean by inverse, right? Then I'll go to the uh, definition, right? So it says what we have done and we understand very easily is that f is a function which goes from a to b. So that means the lines are drawn something like this. Let's say if there are these kind of elements available, you can have many more also. And you say a one, let's say is mapped with one. So this is something what you people very well understand, right? And a three you can also map, let's say, with a four. So this is something called the image diagram. Right, so here a a one image is one, a two image is two, and a three image is four. So the process is from going from left to right. Right, it is going from left to right direction. Okay, what if we want the process to go from right to left? We want this channel to be the other way around, from right to left. We want this kind of stuff. Then what we will do? In fact, we want something of the sort going from B to A. Right, so in fact, rather than mapping it, say for example, if I have to map, so you are mapping a one is having one as answer, you will map that a two is having two answer, you will map that a three is four as answer. Rather than that, I want the mapping to be said like if one is there, then the output is a one. If the input is two, then the output will be a two. If the input is four, then the output will be a three. Right, completely the reverse order. You can see I have drawn it as a Reverse order, right? Reverse, or in a way, we can say inverse of what you are getting, and that is the reason we say inverse trigonometry. Then, when whenever I teach inverse, you will find that uh, this definition is also valid over there. So, you need a function, let's say g, which is actually doing the opposite role. They are it is going from b to a rather than going from a to b. This is called a this g function is known as the inverse function. First of all, okay. So this is inverse function which we actually can denote easily by f of f raised to power minus one, f raised to power minus one. So actually it is not raised to power. So never write it by a. This is never equal to one by f. All right, this is absurd. Don't don't ever do this uh, particular step. This is completely absurd nonsense. So this is the meaning of inverse function. Okay. So you want it in two in terms of pre images. You are thinking in terms of pre images. That is what I have written over here. So if you say that f of A is equal to B, right? Then I can say that f inverse of B will give you A. Obviously, so you say if you put A in the machine, answer is B. So the inverse machine, when you put B, the answer would be A. So for understanding, you people can just take it at this way that there is a machine here, right? This is the normal machine F, right? It gives you some output, right? There was some input. So there must be another machine which will do what now? It will take this particular output as its input, right? It will take this output as its input, right? This is then f, and this will then give you this particular input. So this is something. This is again Lehman. All right, I am uh, saying that this is not the exact definition, but this is for Lehman to understand that how a inverse function works. Got it? Another most important property of a one-one function is that it has to be bijective. You cannot find the inverse of a function which is not bijective. Very, very important. Okay, so let's go through the properties of a inverse function. So it says that for an inverse function to exist, right, it should be one one and on two. So a function which is neither one one nor on two will never be inverse. So for an inverse to exist, it is the basic condition, right? 
and inverse of a bijection is also a bijection in itself all right very obvious stuff inverse of a bijection is unique another very important property so that means you cannot have two inverse for a particular function inverse of a function is always one and it is unique properties of inverse is we go about doing the, that stuff f inverse of inverse will again give you f only all right very simple and very easy to remember if f and g are two bijections such that g of f exists right that this decomposed function exists very very important property it says that g of f inverse if you want to find so g of f inverse if you want to find you can find it the other way around first you will find f inverse and then you will find g inverse very simple rather than finding so what i have written over here is that here first of all for finding it so here in this lhs you first of all have to find the composite function and then take the inverse composite function and then it's inverse on the right hand side what i have written is you will have to take first inverse and then the composite function so which is much easier right so you can use and this property is in fact valid for three or more functions also so for example if it is given as uh, let's say uh, g of f of h inverse right so i can say this the other way around so order will get reverse it will be h inverse of f inverse of g inverse right so for the first thing that you will calculate on the lhs will be g inverse x then put the value into f inverse and then i'll do this illustrate this with an help of example don't worry about it other most important thing if a uh, f is a function from a to b is a bijection then f inverse is a we know this stuff f inverse so what this property is actually all about is that f of f inverse is nothing but identity function which is x so if you get something very important stuff if you get f of g is equal to x somewhere in your answer that implies that g is nothing but inverse of f or the other way around you can say f is g inverse both of these things are valid both of them right so very important stuff that if f of g is equal to x i'm repeating it that implies g is nothing but f inverse though this concept is generally being uh, used in je advanced level problems extensively used i should rather say we'll skip this for the time being and for the je mains level okay let's tra start and try and find the inverse of a particular function and i'll demonstrate how you find the inverse of a particular function so for example this is y is equal to uh, something of this sort is given okay minus upon 10 raised to power minus x plus 10 raised to power minus x now what you people are asked to do when you are finding inverse so some let's try and understand first so y equal to fx is a normal function right you want a inverse function so what should happen in an inverse function so if you see the diagram again which we draw just a bit earlier so it was saying that if you input something in this particular machine that is f it will give you some output right this is the normal flow you want the flow to be reversed you want this output to be given to some particular function and it should return you the input so this is the workflow that you people want that is where the inverse function comes in so for that means you want that now the output should be yes so something of this sort you people are looking for you want something of this sort because now you want your x to be the output can you see that this becomes the output so this is the output side and this becomes the input side the reverse order so your first target in a inverse problem should be so if first step is if y is equal to fx is there right try and writing like x equal to fy first step so the first step that i am going to apply here is i am doing that stuff here so first of all what i'll do i'll write this as uh, in the easiest form that i can do okay uh, there is a typo in this question let's say this is plus x otherwise we will not be able to solve right so this is plus x and this is also plus x so if we want to solve this what i can do i can rewrite this as 10 raised to the power x and similarly the denominator would also be same that i'll write 1 upon 10 raised to the power x so this becomes 10 raised to the power 2x minus 1 by 10 raised to the power 2x plus 1 
this is equal to y right so i want my the second uh, the first step says that you need to write in the explicit form so you know this is the explicit form okay remember so we want to write explicitly in terms of x right so what what we people should do is let's say we collate the terms which are having the functions of x so something like this could be done and uh, if you want i can take this over here so you can say 10 raised to power 2x times 1 minus y will be equal to this will be y plus 1 and i can say 10 raised to power 2x will be equal to y plus 1 by 1 minus y and you want x to be there so you can take log on both sides log with base 10 right so you you will get what 2x is equal to log with base 10 y plus 1 by 1 minus y this is what you will get so in fact you can see that you have got your step here so it says that x is equal to 1 by 2 log of y plus 1 upon 1 minus y with base 10 right so this is your step so after this the question is almost over you just have to do what now if this the rhs this becomes your inverse function this is now your inverse function very simply so now just replace y in terms of x and if you want to say that f inverse then it will become y is equal to 1 by 2 log with base 10 x plus 1 upon 1 minus x so this because becomes the inverse function right you do not leave the answer ever in y we'll answer in terms of x only so eventually after you have got this you what you will do replace y by x right this is what you should actually do so this is the answer that we were looking for okay let's apply the logic that we have just understood in uh um, in a you can say a much more difficult problem than we take uh, we just take okay so it says that fx is equal to 2 raised to power x into x minus 1 also given to us is the uh, you know definition of the function it domain is from 1 to infinity that is given and you are also given the codomain though whenever you are asked to find inverse our first step should be to check whether uh, check whether inverse exists or not right whether inverse exists or not but generally uh, we skip this for lower level examinations right we should actually check whether inverse exists or not but yes for je advanced we will definitely check so for je mains level and other competitive exams you can just assume that this is actually bijective so the basic condition of checking whether a inverse exists or not is the function should be bijective we assume that this is bijective right we are assuming that it is bijective for j means level believe me but for advanced level you people will be definitely solving first of all for the bijective process so now the target here let me write what is the target you want to write something of x is equal to fy to find the inverse right so right now you have y is equal to 2 raised to power x into x minus 1 so how do we do this yes immediately take log with base 2 right and this will reduce to x into x minus 1 and this actually now reduces to a quadratic if you see and this could be written something like this so how do you solve quadratic very simple stuff ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 so the we know that the roots of this equation are minus b plus minus 2d by 2a similarly apply the same stuff here so x could will be equal to b is here minus 1 so this becomes 1 plus minus under root b square minus so b square 1 plus 4 ac so that becomes what yes tell me yeah log all right and this will be what 2a will be 2 so now you have two particular values of x let me write it here so you are getting two values of x one plus minus this is one upon under root oh sorry one under root this log y right with base 2 and this is completely divided by 2 so there are two values depending on plus or minus right and i told you that the inverse of a function is unique inverse is always 
यूनिक सो दैट मीन्स वेन वी से इनवर्स इज ऑलवेज यूनिक दैट मीन्स देर मस्ट बी वन आंसर यूनिक का मतलब क्या है दैट देर शुड बी ओनली ओनली वन ओनली वन आंसर सो हाउ डू यू डू दिस नाउ सो वी वॉन्ट ओनली वन आंसर इधर इट वुड बी प्लस और माइनस नाउ द रोल ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर डेफिनेशन विल कम इन प्ले नाउ दिस बिकम्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो इट से इज दैट द वैल्यूज विच एक्स कैन टेक सो दिस इज समथिंग दिस आर एच एस रिप्रेजेंट दी वैल्यूज विच एक्स कैन टेक x will take values lying from 1 to infinity now if i take a value let's say x so there are two values 1 plus root something right let me write something here okay and this will be root of 1 minus root of something i it doesn't matter to me what is written inside right and in fact this is also 1 by 2 need not worry okay so how do you decide whether which value would be satisfied by the domain yes now you have got the point so you want the values of x to lie from 1 to infinity right can you tell me that this will be some problem here because here is minus so it this value will be less than 1 and again you will divide it by 2 that means this will definitely be less than 1 so you do not want this answer so this is not the inverse so for inverse what we will use we will use this particular value of x and that is how you solve so the inverse of this function is nothing but 1 by 2 into 1 plus under root of 1 plus 4 log y right and if you are asked inverse so how you will write if inverse x is nothing but eventually replace everything that is there with yes x do not leave answer in terms of y that is wrong believe me you will never be able to match your answer so this is the particular answer we were looking for this is your answer all right let us take another problem to understand the concept of inverse of a function so it is given that f is a function which goes from r to r right the domain and the codomain is also given here and the fx function the definition of the function how it is mapping so this is the mapping which is given to you right and g is also given where g is a function again where domain is r and the codomain is also r and g is defined somewhere like x cube so this is the definition of the function right you need to find g of f inverse 27 what do you mean by this is you want to find g of f inverse at x equal to 27 right this is what is meant by this so there are two ways of doing this so first step is that you find first of all g of f and then find its inverse and then find its inverse okay and lastly put x equal to 27 so this is first method but as you can see this is a bit lengthy why because you will have to calculate g of f also and then its inverse which could be a tedious task what we people will follow is the uh, you know the formula that we just uh, did earlier so g of f inverse is nothing but equal to what f inverse of g inverse x right so in this way if you apply this you have to individually find the inverse right you have to find the individual inverse of the function individual inverse of functions so this is actually much more easier because you have the functions that are given to you are very simple so for example if i have to talk about g inverse what will be the g inverse so you can easily find g inverse because it says y equal to x cube x will become y equal to 1 by 3 so the inverse of this function becomes x raised to power 1 by 3 very simple so if we want to talk about fx how do you find fx yes f inverse can you tell me what will be the f inverse very orally what will be the value of x in terms of y if i say that this is equal to y so this becomes what y minus 1 by 2 so this is nothing but x minus 1 by 2 is the yes so if we were to solve this at what value at x is equal to 27 so this is nothing but you want to find f inverse when you are finding g inverse at 27 we already have g inverse with us that's it the, you can see that the question is now very very simple so g inverse 27 is nothing but what 3 because you will be doing 27 raised to power 1 by 3 27 is nothing but 3 cube okay got it so that step reduces to f inverse 3 what is f inverse 3 just put the value here you get answer as 
one and this is the C option that we were looking for. All right. So I hope this particular concept is clear. Just apply the uh, inverse like this. That uh, this this formula actually is very helpful. Believe me, this this formula of individual uh, finding individual inverse will help you out in uh, tough problems. All right, students. So by this we come to the end of this particular chapter. Uh, though we could have done much more, but believe me, it is not uh, required uh, to do more than the topics that we have already done. Okay. and uh, we will be doing some tough questions subsequently in the other chapters for example we will be covering a lot of functions in the um, maximum minima and increasing decreasing so don't worry about them so they will be again covered and in fact you will be re revising the functions in uh, definite integration as well and in the area topic as well so just do the basic that i have told you in fact if what extra that you want to do is that you can just uh, draw some graphs and remember them that is what extra you people can do for this particular chapter as usual the worksheets will be mailed to you people the last day worksheet was also mailed so don't worry the worksheets are mailed just simply do them don't worry about the difficulty level i have seen that on the group and on the whatsapp channel that people are asking and solving the difficult problems do do them at their own risk okay i don't know you personally you might be uh, very comfortable with doing them so people who are comfortable doing tough problems go on it's really required do them but people who are not comfortable it's not advisable for them to do them at this point of time don't waste your energy in doing tough questions at this point of time believe me it will it will drastically reduce your score okay and the other important thing that since people who are going to uh, take their boards uh, on the channel you have ncert video solutions which are actually arranged chapter wise and the exo exercise wise okay uh, and they are extremely useful and they are actually being developed uh, by one of my students who, and who is now sitting at google okay and so there's something really beneficial for those those who are rewriting boards or in fact attempting boards uh, fresh at this point of time so you just have to uh, search the channel by the chapter and the exercise and the question number you will get definitely get the video solution present over there very very handy believe me all right so that this is something which will definitely help you at boards okay don't worry we will meet again tomorrow see you with the a new chapter good night